we'll get going this morning. A uh, couple announcements. Well, not a couple. I only have one announcement. If you guys have more announcements, please tell me. Um, next week, we are going to have Michelle Bailey. And um, if any of you know Michelle, she is on one of the boards at the National Association of Realtors. She is in Chicago this week um, doing all the National Association um, stuff after the whole NAR settlement. And she said that next week she would jump on with our group and talk about anything we wanted to talk about um, coming off of those meetings that they had this week. Um, so start getting your thoughts together on what questions we have regarding sellers, what questions we have regarding buyers. This was a topic that a lot of our top agents requested. Um, and so if that's of interest to you, Michelle uh, will be on next week and um, her perspective will be from the National Association of Realtors. Cool? Okie dokie. Okay, this morning we have... Um, we have a couple of gals. I'm going to go ahead and make them co-hosts, and I'm also going to spotlight them. Let me do it one at a time real quick. Um, who has ever closed the client? First of all, who's closed the client? A few of us. Awesome. Happy. That is why we're here, right? At the end of the day, everything is great, and we can all be friends, but we're in business to sell houses, right? To help people. Um, and then... Of you who have sold houses, who here has perhaps um, not really kept in touch with their past clients? Anybody? Okay. I, I hope, I imagine it's happened to you. Who here kind of sometimes reads our, um, maybe some of our place cadences and they're like, I know it says I should call every quarter, but like that feels awkward because they already bought a house. Like, there's like 90% of you guys, everybody else. Great job. But like the 90%, which I would say I might have been in the 90%. So like none of us are really perfect. Um, this morning I wanted to talk about outside of just doing a quarterly call, right? Which great and kudos when you do it right outside of that, how are we adding value to past clients so that during that seven year period where they're probably not going to buy and sell potentially they're still thinking about you for their referrals they're still thinking about you because they said 86 percent of the time they wanted to use you again so anyway this morning we've got elizabeth gassos who you guys know um in dallas and then jordan where which area are you in you're like in a bigger, like you have a mass radius, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, we, so we cover a pretty large geographical area. West Texas is a little bit more, uh, uh, not so densely populated. So love it. Um, and then Midland, Odessa, we cover all the way down to like Terlingua and Alpine. Okay. All right. So uh, Elizabeth has a lot of population. Um, Jordan has a lot of uh, radius. So we'll go with it. Um, I want to pop into Elizabeth first. Elizabeth, um, You've been doing some cool stuff. One of the value adds that you have is for past clients' equity reports. Mm -hmm. I feel like some of us would know what an equity report is, but I don't want to assume. And I also want to hear it from you. Like, what are you, what do you mean? What's an equity report? Like, walk us down that road and share yeah. your screen, do anything you want. Okay. So an equity report is not unlike a market report, but it has uh, an addition to it where it's more numbers oriented. Um, so you need to know how much they still own, owe on the property, preferably even like the interest rate they have on it. And it's literally a report saying, here is the equity in your house. Here is how much um, wealth you have created just in your real estate asset. Um, so yeah, it's just a report that I started doing a couple of years ago for all my past clients. And now that there's a lot of them, it's getting a little harder. So um, I can kind of walk you guys through some examples if you want to. I don't know if you have other yeah. questions. I, um, I mean, do you want to walk us through and then I can ask questions? Sure. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because um, I'm actually in the in the midst of doing it for 2024. Nice. So I'll show you guys first. Um, actually, let me just go ahead and share my whole screen. Um, so first I'll show you guys an old one. So as you can tell back then I made like 53 of these and I just kind of made a template and I really only had to update this part of it. So this is like the address for the property, 
per, what they purchased it for, what currently the market value is, et cetera. And it was just like a really quick report that I would do for people. Mm -hmm. um, and now this year I'm changing it up a little bit. I wanted to add a little bit different value. Obviously this section's changing, right? No one's refinancing right now. Um, so that part's going to change and, oh, let me see if I can move, uh, move this menu out of the way. There we go. And so here's what it's looking like now. This year, I'm going to do it in Canva websites, um, which are free if you are a Canva pro member. So here's like the first one. This is actually a picture of the MLS from their house that I put back there. Here's what the, the equity report part looks like. And actually, it's really easy to do this um, because we use Palm Agent here in DFW. I'm sure you guys do it as well or, or some sort of like calculator app. So I use the desktop version. They have a new calculator called equity review. So I just pop in the information um, and gives me all these numbers and I literally just copy pasted. I'm not trying to make it difficult. Um, I made these pictures in chat GPT <laughs> and I'm adding a little bit more extra to it. So what can equity do for you? Obviously all these are chat GPT, by the way, pictures. Um, and then I'm going to add our vendor list to it. I'm also going to add a spot for them to send us reviews, send us referrals. So, um, and, um, probably our next, our next, um, team, uh, event that we have coming up. Um, and then, hopefully, and I already have this list going over here. So um, I have all my past clients here. Hopefully what I'm going to do is just do all the comps for all of the properties um, and put that number here, put the link to all the comps here, and then have our VAs and my assistant actually just like copy um, it into everything. So it's not like I'm going to have to do whatever, how many past clients we have. Um, but yeah, that's like the gist <laughs> of what the equity report is, but it's ultimately a way to touch people specifically with real estate um, to um, to keep in touch, but not like to give extra value. Also, most of us are in Texas. It's a non-disclosure state. So our market reports are only so helpful. They'll be able to see what properties have had activity, but not their sold prices. So everyone kind of wants to know that. Um, I use on our MLS, we have Cloud CMA, which does list sold prices because they pay the MLS. I've already talked to Bob about this. I was like, why does Cloud CMA do this and not ours? But they have a special deal with our MLS. So that's what I have to use. Not that our tools aren't great. It's the only tool that gives us sold prices. So I give them a link to the Cloud um, CMA so they can actually you know, go through it. Um, but yeah, I go through all the properties, kind of tell them, here's what I think your property is worth to kind of base everything off of. And then well, Deanna said, what was that called again? It's Palm Agent. Um, you might have something different in your area. It's just an app that has a ton of calculators on it. Um, so our title company gives us access to it. Okay. So if you had a little bit of past clients, would mm -hmm. you be doing this in person with them? And if you had a lot of past clients, would you be emailing it or mailing it to them? Like walk me through, like, I don't have a lot of past clients. I have a lot of past clients, anything different. What are your suggestions? Yeah. It's never been something that I plan to do in person. This okay. year was a little bit different is I actually just yesterday sent an email out to all past clients and said, Hey, it's equity report time again. This time, since there's a lot more of you, um, I'm going to give priority to those that respond to this email and let me know that you want one. So I already had like six people yesterday that were like, yeah, I want one. And so they're the first ones on my list that are going to get done. Everyone else will eventually get done, but um, it also helps me identify like who really likes it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just an easy way to keep in touch with people. Um, this, yeah. So that's, that's the equity report. So if you sent it to them, um, do you suggest any kind of follow-up? Is there anything like it gets sent and then it, does it just like, just get sent? Is there anything that you suggest for that? Or, I mean, it makes a really easy follow-up because if you send an email or even if you want to mail it to someone, call them a week later, be like, Hey, I sent the email. Did you get it? Um, do, do you have any questions about it? Do you have anyone else in your world that would like one as well? Um, just kind of depends. Um, but that's a really easy phone call. And it's Got just, it. like I said, it's mostly just touching your clients again. Some of them might've just bought a month ago and they're getting one. Um, but how, um, how long, how long do you think it takes you per, per property to do like that CMA? 
because you're wanting to get it pretty right or is it pretty like like quick what are you going for it's pretty quick um I kind of have two methods I can do to it if I know what the house looks like now for example the one I showed you guys that's my best friend's house she she was the first one to email me back yes I want one and so I've been there I know what it looks like now so I was like pretty confident in it um, if it's someone's house I haven't been to in a long time, I would probably just preface that in the email. Hey, like I'm going to give you a range since I haven't been in the house in a couple of years um, based on what it looked like when we purchased it. Here's the price. If you want to you know, increase its value, your, your, your neighborhood has a potential of X. I literally just kind of do a rough estimate of what's currently, what has been sold recently, what it is like. I, I do kind of a quick and dirty version of it. Or I check the AVM, which is in realist tax. If you guys don't know realist tax, highly recommend learning that tool. Um, it's in most of our MLSs, but there's they give like spit out a number to you that's normally a range. Um, and sometimes I'll just give that if I can't run comps on it. Got it. Um, so guys, what I want you to kind of think about is imagine Elizabeth closes a client and I close a client. Elizabeth for the next five years, talks to them, invites them to her client events, does an equity report every year. And then I try to time my reach outs to when I think they'll have real estate needs. Who do you think is actually going to have success? Not a one-time or two-time thing, but like sustainably successful, right? Like what you're building and what Elizabeth is building is consistent success not like a one-time thing. Um, so I love this because who doesn't want to know the value? Like I want to know the value of my stock. Like I'm in my app all the time. Imagine like a homeowner, right? Um, one thing you are going to add this year is called a portfolio analysis. Mm -hmm. um, what do you imagine that to be? I have not heard that recently. Yeah. So, so it was, that. it's a new concept to me as well, but I was um, really inspired by it. So I went to the KWIP, the Keller Williams Dick Professionals launch in San Francisco um, last month. And one of the speakers there, his name is Drew Wisdom. He's in Louisville, Kentucky, and he only works with investments. And obviously his market's different. Like the market in Kentucky, it is great market to purchase rentals. Um, and he has what's called the portfolio analysis, which he will do an analysis, which I can actually share my screen in a minute. Um, of Like let's say you own two properties. He'll be like, great. Would you like me to do a portfolio analysis so you can see how your property is performing? And mm -hmm. so um, you do have to get some information from the landlord. Um, but the idea behind it is so that the landlord can see how much equity and how much um, how much they're making off the property monthly, et cetera. And so that if you see an opportunity where you're like, hey, um, I see that you actually, your rent is 1500 on this property and it's actually should be 2,500. You're leaving this much money on the table that most landlords sell for one of two reasons. And it's one, they need money or two, they want to get rid of a headache. And so if they say, yeah, I just hate, I don't want to deal with these tenants, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you can say, hey, what if I show you a way where you can double your money, like sell this property, buy two more, and you don't have to deal with these tenants anymore. It's a way to create those conversations. Um, and I have an opportunity right now with one of my buyers. He just inherited like a hundred properties from his mom. <laughs> and wow. so um, who knows when they're going to sell it, but he says eventually he wants to sell all of them and buy one big commercial property. Cause again, he wants to get rid of the headache of managing a hundred tenants. <laughs> so I'm like, I have to learn to get good at this analysis. So I wasn't going to start at a hundred, <laughs> Um, so I asked again, my, in that same email, I asked my past clients, if you have one or more investment properties and would like a portfolio analysis, this is something new I'm offering. I'd love to, um, practice. So let me know if you want me to do that. So I had two people, actually three people respond yesterday. Um, one that owns a multifamily and two that own, um, like that their original, their first home is now their rental home. So I'll be able to kind of play around with that. I love that equity reports and portfolio analysis. There's a yeah. couple questions there, in the chat. Um, yeah, that now, there was a question about brevity. Um, like nothing is really done in brevity. Um, with only this. because yeah, only because we in Texas we don't ha we're a non disclosure state. We do not have sold prices in yeah. brevity. Um, that yeah. is different from other states. Yeah, and. Um, I've talked about, about this before because there's another company called Cloud CMA that they pay the MLS to be able to give sold prices. 
um, which they are not allowing Brivity to, to do that. So we don't have that option right now. Got it. Got it. I'll let you pop into chat. If, if, if you're not active in chat, Elizabeth is active in chat. Um, anything else that you would suggest as far as anything past client or current client to set us up for a good spring? I mean, even if you don't want to do the whole thing, just like even a phone call of saying like, Hey, I was running an equity report for another client in your neighborhood. And I saw that their home went up 300,000, um, like, so just wanted to let you know that your house has gone up quite a bit. Let me know if you want a more extensive report. Um, you don't have to do one for everybody, um, but at least you can start that conversation and see who would be interested in it. Um, yeah, so. I love that. Just, just start somewhere. Start somewhere. That is awesome. I These are really good buzzwords, you guys. Equity um, report, portfolio analysis, like, that that sounds really good. Like if somebody called me and said that to me, if somebody reached out to me via email, I would really think that this person is professional um, and that this is their career. And especially in a time where we are defending our fees, we, you have to defend your value. Um, so great job defending your value. Uh, love that. Uh, I'm gonna go to Jordan. Uh, I know Jordan, we said we like wouldn't necessarily talk about events, uh, but I want to touch on um, on that a second with you because you do great client events. Um, and we all say, oh, we are so good face to face. Uh, but then when we have a client event coming up, it's sometimes we don't get a lot of people there. Uh, we don't always maximize the opportunity to be face to face. Um, so can you give us a rundown of the client events that you do or you've done in the past and then give us your thoughts on how you couple it up with something um, that is, you know, it feels good, like a charity? Yeah, so we we try to make all of our client events something that um, we've either got open to the general public as well and we're just putting an emphasis on getting our clients there or something that we are like grouping with our clients to give back to the community. Um, so like a, a recent example, we just did an Easter egg hunt uh, and bunny pictures, like free bunny pictures in one of our like local rose gardens in, in Lubbock, um, had all of our past clients out and we invite the Texas Girls and Boys Ranch, which is a local foster home here in Lubbock, um, as well as um, one of our um, ED schools out to come and, and get pictures and um, and th things like that too. So my my uh, husband has always been the rabbit every year. Um, and actually my 14 year old got to do that this year, which was another cool thing, I think, to kind of bond with other clients. They've seen my kids grow up over the years and that's my 14 year old inside the rabbit this year, you know? Um, and so that's always kind of allowed us to get uh, closer to like our clients being able to have that camaraderie. I've kind of learned over the years that we don't want to do client events where our agents or even myself are going to be super busy making sure that everything runs smoothly because that's when you lose that opportunity to get that face-to-face -face in. Um, so we want to make sure it's something that's easy to set up uh, or that we have vendors that are going to be there helping us um, something that's kind of low maintenance as the, as the, you know, activity is going on and something that we can really like get close with our clients while those things are happening. Um, we do one in around Christmas time, we do like Grinch and Santa photos. And this is like a long event. This sounds kind of silly, like how, how we set it up, but I say like over the course of a couple of months prior to Thanksgiving, we adopt a bunch of tags from the Salvation Army angel tree. Um, and so we start offering to our vendors and offering to our past clients, hey, do you want to adopt one of these kiddos uh, wish list this year? Um, and we let them know like a front, it's usually $150 to a $200 investment to take on one of those wish lists. Um, I think this last year we were able to sponsor like 32 kids um, through the Salvation Army. And this gets them like clothes that they need, things for school, and then a couple of like want items that they want as well. Um, and we run that program usually from prior to Thanksgiving until we do those Grinch and Santa photos in December. Um, so we get to do delivery after that. Uh, two years ago, not last year, but two years ago when we had the opportunity, we actually went to the Salvation Army for a day, our whole team, and did distribution, uh, put together all the bicycles and the dollhouses and things like that, and got to distribute those within the community. So all of these events, they have really low overhead, if any overhead for us, um, because it's pretty much a volunteer basis from either ourselves or 
or um, one of our vendors, but it allows us to really like have a bonding moment with our clients on top of that. Like if you spent, you know, seven hours building dollhouses with the client um, or even a team member, like that creates a, a different type of lasting relationship um, as opposed to, you know, just going off and you know we used to drop off like chalk at the beginning of school year that was like a client event for us we still do cute like pop buys and things like that but most of the time when we dropped that off they weren't even home you know so we didn't get that face to face so mm -hmm. having the opportunity to actually you know do something and contribute with them it kind of almost creates this idea that you know we're all kind of we're in this together because we are you know um and we're you know both involved in the community together so um those events have been really powerful for us the other one that we do uh, annually, right before um, we everyone goes back to school, and about about the end of July, um, we uh, do like a carnival at our like our our market center. Have vendors come out; they're responsible for like a game or an event or something like that. And then we collect school supplies for the local for the Texas Girls and Boys Ranch, which is our local foster home. Um, so almost all of our client events are are coupled with something philanthropic. If there is any overhead, I'm asking vendors to sponsor those things. So like. Easter eggs and candy. Like I had a vendor that came in and did all that. Um, so yeah, that's the, those are some of just some of our main client events that we try to do every year. I know um, a lot of uh, folks on the call also have pets, uh, dogs. Do you do anything around that? Do you remind? I'm, I yeah. Feel like you yeah. Do. So we a, a couple when we do the back to school event. Um, I always invite like some of our local foster uh, like um, like pet fosters out to come and bring any adoptable dogs that they have and um, because the the best luck they have getting a dog adopted um we have a few cats that come too but um if, to getting a pet adopted is having that like interaction with a potential new home and so those are really good opportunities to have that interaction um also when we do Grinch and Santa photos we only had one dog come out this year but um we we accidentally did it on the same night that Texas Tech had a football game, which is not don't don't do events when your local college has like some, something going on because nobody will show up. Um, but we usually invite like local fosters to come bring like pets and things like that to get Grinch and Santa photos so that we can highlight, hey, these dogs are adoptable. And y'all, those are like the funniest photos like these dogs are terrified of the Grinch for some reason. So anyway, but those make good photos too. And we get to get those out to the community as well that, hey, we have these adoptable dogs right before Christmas, especially when everyone's talking about going and getting puppies and things, we really push the idea of adopting a, you know, a, a dog that's, you know, not a puppy that a lot of times, you know, we, we see like that summer dump season where a lot of people get, get a puppy at Christmas and by June, it's no longer a puppy. And that's why the pounds get filled, full of, or uh, filled in the, uh, in the summer so that's so right what um is, is this doing something for your business or do you just do it for fun it, honestly both um okay. I think yeah when we started having like more I, I think influence in the community um that's just you know that's for this but we saw the effects within our business as well um I, I genuinely think that the majority of our past clients like the idea of being able to say that they support one of those causes. Um, and so that, I think that makes them more apt to work with us. Um, but at the same time, when they have a need, you know, like we, we've we got, you know, opportunities or ways to be able to help our clients when we need to. And so it, it lets them know that they can reach out, out to us for things that may not just be real estate related. Um, and I will say, y'all, I probably haven't been as great about tracking the numbers is what I should be, um, like as far as like our reoccurrence with past clients, like who uses us and who doesn't. But I've been doing this almost a decade and I I genuinely can't think off of the top of my head one of my past clients who didn't use me the second time around. Um, when I know the industry average is like 12% are using the same agent the next time around. Um, so I know our numbers are absolutely beating the industry average. And I think it's because we've created that camaraderie with our clients. How many past clients would you say you have or your team or however you want to answer that? Uh, probably 500 plus. Okay, great. So like a scalable business. Okay, noted. Um, what other ways are you adding value right now to your to your past clients? Yeah, so I, I can kind of give you an idea of just like what we do for 
like the year. So um, January, February, we're fighting, helping our clients fight their property taxes. Um, Lubbock has three major school districts and then a lot of growing rural school districts around Lubbock. Um, but we have two of the fastest growing school districts in the state right now. And anytime that happens, people's property taxes skyrocket. Um, they've literally taxed those people to the highest percentage that they can. And so the only way to get more money out of them is to go in and say their properties are worth more. My personal home went up $100,000 last year and we did nothing to it. Um, and I, I promise you, we did not have that much appreciation in Lubbock, like to, to equate to that. Um, and so we, in January and February, he just said 120 this year. I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, anyway, so January, February, March, we're sending out notifications just saying, hey, if you want us to like run CMAs and things like that to, sh to show what you're, you know, properly actually appreciated at. And then I talk with my clients, like, what do you want this report to kind of look like? Do you want to, are you, are you looking to sell? Because if you are, we want this report to show like the most, you know, accurate number um, to be able to sell your property. But if for what you really think it's worth, we're going to go fight taxes with it. I'm probably not going to use the most pristine comps for that kind of report because um, we're going to fight property taxes. And, and hey, like if we don't, if we don't have to give it all to Uncle Sam, we're not going to. So um, that's a conversation that we typically have January, February, March. How can we help you fight your property taxes? Most people don't even know that they can do that. Um, so you'd be you'd be surprised. Um, we do uh, investment one on one seminars biannually. Um, I usually invite a couple of lenders out to that. And then I want to have alternative lenders for people, not just your traditional lenders, but hard money lenders, private lenders and things like that that can loan on projects that, you know, maybe a traditional lender wouldn't. Um, a lot of people don't know that you don't have to have money to get into your first investment property. The last five investments that Nikki and I bought, bought, we didn't bring a cent of our own money to the table. Um, and so being able to have those conversations with people and what that looks like. Um, we send out yearly vendor list and this kind of works twofold. Um, one, we're getting the list out and two, we can ask our clients if they want to be on that um, list. Um, and then uh, we offer opportunities for them to get involved in those give back events as well. Um, and so anytime something like that's going on, we give them a heads up that, hey, if you want to sponsor a kiddo, like we let them know in, you know, November that that's something that they can do. Um, so we have something going on pretty much year round. Uh, you're sending out your vendor list annually, right? Mm -hmm. Do you send it out via email? Is it something that is physically sent out? Yes. Yeah, so we, we, we have like, I mean, it's, it, that's something we can use property for. So I usually just have my VA go through and send that vendor list out once a year. But prior to doing that, we send that out in December ish prior to doing that about October, we're reaching out to our clients to see if they want to be on that list. Okay. So it's a, kind of a twofold. That. I love that. Is there anything else that you could share with us, either past clients or active clients where it's working for you guys and it would help everybody else have a really good spring because we're already in quarter two. We're in spring market now. Yeah, honestly, one of the most beneficial things for our business has been um, having access and being able to send out um, school registration information. Y'all, it costs me nothing. It's all on local like school site websites. It allows me to be more involved in what's going on with my kids. Um, but I can send out like where registration's at, what what time it is, like what information they're going to need when they go register, um, when you know transfer dates go out. It's one email that I can send out multiple times over the course of the summer. When if someone's shopping, that's you know that's when we want to remind them and stay front of mind, anyways. Um, so anyway, we we send out school information like once a year on all of our school districts based on where our clients are located. I actually love that because I was like, why would you send out school registration information? Um, but now that I heard you say it, absolutely. People are thinking about moving all the time. Um, so what a great way to get ahead of that. Um, fantastic. I love that. Um, this is really good. I, I love that. I love you ladies always having such a huge heart to give back to all of us. Um, if you, I, in, in my maternity leave, I have become a trash TV junkie and, um, like I'm a new person. I don't even know who I am. Um, however, uh, there is this new, um, new season of, um, buying Beverly Hills. It's actually very good. Uh, if you ever want to check it out, it's hilarious. Um, but this, this gentleman says, you know, like he sells so much property, but he says the best thing that he gets to do every day is to help others, uh, develop their career. Right. And that is something that both Elizabeth and Jordan just, just pour their heart out to us. 
and help us all become better. And it's those little things. Guys, it's not the big things that will make you a ton of money, right? Because there's nothing new under the sun. It's the little things that you implement that gives you the edge, right? It's all of these little things. They all come together. And when you do it consistently, it looks really good. So it's going to be a great quarter too. I'm excited. Um, ladies, thank you so much. Elizabeth is in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, Jordan is in West Texas. Just think of West Texas and you'll probably find her uh, somewhere out there. Uh, you might have to look for her because it's a big area. Um, and then we'll see you guys next week uh, to have a conversation with Michelle Bailey. And if you know Michelle Bailey, she is very to the point. So grab your coffee for that one um, and we'll get to it. Um, Elizabeth will have some content that she'll share and then I'll, I'll shoot it out to everybody. And then we'll just, we'll kind of get to implementing Jordan, Elizabeth. Thank you girls. Have a good rest of your day. Bye guys.